I need a banjo. Ding, 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 ding. With two Charlotte Wilder guys. What? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Wild and crazy guys. Um, whenever I put a pencil like this, I feel like I'm a medieval warrior who had like the piece of metal that like went over their nose. <laughs> <laughs> the eject button was mashed rather rapidly. It was like, ah. <laughs> there, you know, sometimes I'm like. Why don't I try saying it out loud and see how it goes? Do you want to talk about the Clippers? Do I want to talk about the Clippers, you said? Sure. <laughs> Welcome to Oddball. I'm Amino Hassan. That is Charlotte Wilder. Uh, as you can see, it is Spirit Week. Georgia Tech plays Miami, so... I'm going to be wearing Georgia Tech stuff all week long because my quest to become the most powerful alum in the history of the university is, or institute, I should say, is underway. Charlotte, where did you go to college? I went to Colby College in Waterville, Maine, uh, a D3 powerhouse, as we're known. Um, and I need some more Colby gear, I think. There you go. Colby Jack, my favorite kind of cheese. Hey, it's, it's good cheese. It, it's Wednesday. Did you learn any math at that liberal arts college you went to in Maine, Charlotte? Absolutely not, which is why I am so bad at word count Wednesday, the game where we try to count to 10. Music classes yeah. also were not available at Colby College. But uh, you know what? You know what I did a lot of at we, Colby College? You what did you do? Poetry, which is why... So I'm so good at talking. Give me a poem right now. Write a poem about what we're talking about right now. Roses are red. Violets are blue. Portland has Rob and Boston has Drew. You know what? You saved it at the end. That's the, I was going to call it trite and pedantic, but then you saved it at the end. Hey, you. you know what's not trite? What? Those iPhone 15 titaniums. Yowza! <laughs> those are some pricey items. But not they too... They sure are. Why, uh, why are you bringing them up, I mean? Well, because they're not too pricey for one Russell Westbrook. As a gift to all of his teammates, he went out and bought a bunch of iPhone 15 titaniums. They just dropped a few weeks ago, and he said, Hey, I know you guys are all millionaires and probably all upgraded your phones within the last couple of weeks, but I... I'm going to give you another one. Maybe you give it to a loved one. Maybe you give it to, you, to your child. Maybe you give it to a, a friend or a significant other or whatever. And that's just the, one of the many leadership-type gestures Russell Westbrook has done for the Clippers organization. Apparently, he took them all out to Vegas. They went to dinner at um, Delilah, Delilah. Delilah. At the win in Las Vegas. Went out there. They had a lot of uh, informals. In terms of playing, you know, pick up together, get to know each other. And so, Charlotte, the question is, as Russell Westbrook is doing these magnanimous gestures, as both Kawhi Leonard and Paul George are healthy at the same damn time, mm -hmm. how long before reality comes crashing down on the old Clippers in the form of an injury or some other sort of anger or division in within yeah or russ getting his feelings hurt that all of his teammates aren't using the iphone yeah. 15s he got them i have so person. many questions about that yeah. it, is that do you think that's like he he wants everybody to have a burner that he can only contact them on i feel like there's got to be some other motive going on here because that is just such a weird thing for a rich person to give to other rich people like buy them watches i love when guys buy other guys watches no. it's so like manly and pure in some like pathetic way um look at you i don't i don't know i mean how long uh this is gonna last but i i do think that russ is trying to be a leader i think that's what people are framing this is that's what some headlines i've seen um i'm interested how long do you think this is gonna work well first of all let me just say right now your defense of patriarchy and then your cowardice of calling it oh it's pathetic and yeah no 
I'm it's beautiful and pathetic at the same time. No, I mean, no, no, two no. things can be true at once. Here's what you do with your iPhones, right? You turn on Find My iPhone on all of those devices. So now Russ isn't just giving a magnanimous <laughs> device. Here you go, guys. Now he knows who was out partying last night and who was in the gym getting better. I'm wow. Russell Westbrook. I'm a dictator. I lead with an iron fist. And I'm with you, Russ. Sometimes you got to watch out. Some of these people ain't taking it as serious as you are. So what you do? You give them a gift like, oh, oh, here you go. Uh, here, Terrence Mann. Uh, here, Ivica Zubac. Uh, got your phone? No, no, you, you don't have to do anything. It's already set up. All the numbers, all the contacts are in there. You ain't got to do nothing. But just keep it on you at all times. <laughs> and woe unto you if you do not. You know what I like about this? I mean, what? I like thinking that he also has a backup in case they give it to someone else. He's put an air tag in their gym bag. For sure. For sure. Look, here's the deal, man. I like to imagine Russ as maniacal as I am, right? If I were given hundreds of millions of dollars, oh, you guys, you really wouldn't be able to stand me. I would be doing all types of <laughs> unconstitutional, thing, Patriot Act level shit. Oh, my God. What? Oh, me with hundreds of millions of dollars? Shit. We'd be out here, like, phone tapping conversations. I'd have your text messages cloned to come Why? to my device. Because that's what money and power affords you. An iron grip over the people that you lord over. Yes. And Russ, me and you, simpatico, baby. But as far as how the Clippers are going to do, there is... Two clouds that loom over this organization, right? One is okay. one is the obvious one of health. I, I, at this point, I don't think it's beyond us to question how much we can count on the Clippers to stay healthy within uh, the course of a season and obviously a postseason. The other thing, and this one is crucial, is what's going to happen with James Harden? Is James Harden coming to the Clippers or not? Right, James Harden did not report on media day, did not report to camp on the first day, but the expectation that is he is going to report, but he's not going to do too much. So this is very much still in play for the Clippers, this idea of adding Harden. And I think in a weird way, I, I, I think it would help. I think it would help them add another guy who is a playmaker, a passer, a creator for others, perhaps a little bit better at doing that in the half court than Russell Westbrook is. Well, I also think everyone's giving Harden such a hard time about forcing his way out of this, you know, it would be his third team, which I have also done. I I wonder, though, is there a flip side to that? Like, would he be so happy to be not on the Sixers anymore that he actually tries really, really hard for the Clippers? Like, maybe even, maybe just one season, but maybe if they get him, he's going to give it his all because he's just relieved to be out of the city of brotherly love. I mean, uh, I mean, like that happens every time he gets traded, though, right? Like he gets somewhere and is at first like, oh my god, he's trying so hard, and then as time goes by, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we'll get we'll get one good season out of him, and maybe that's all they need right now if Kawhi and Paul George are going to be healthy. Fair enough. You ready to start counting? Yeah. All right, word counts next. All right, you guys know what it is. I have these cards in my hand. It includes questions that I'm going to ask Charlotte. Charlotte's got to answer them in 10 words or less, hence word count, word count. Uh, and then she has three for me as well. Charlotte, are you ready? Never been more ready in my life. Between Marcus Smart... Grant Williams, Malcolm Brogdon, mm -hmm. and Robert Williams III. Who will the Celtics end up missing the most this season and why? Marcus Smart. Because heart and soul. And let me explain. Can I can I explain? Sure. Can I expand on that? Yeah. So I was gonna say Rob Williams because of the rebounds, but assuming Porzingis is healthy, he averaged I something. think around eight rebounds per game last year. So I feel like they have that part covered, but I don't know that they have the locker room part covered anymore. I don't know that they have that glue guy or the guy who's gonna care so much and give it his all and be um be the the heart and soul of the team. So also I miss him. There you go. I would have gone Robert Williams. Okay. 
You would say Rob Williams? I, I think so because I think part of what Smart does or did is approximated by Drew Holiday. I also think Marcus mm. Smart was slightly overrated in a sense of what his actual contributions are. I Obviously, his leadership is immeasurable. But again, you get part of it is Drew Holiday brings some of those elements. Part of it is Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and growing up, they're a year older. They're supposed to know better. Uh, but Robert Williams, I, don't, I just don't see who on their roster does what he did. Like, at all. So, it is what it is. So. All right. Uh, well, oh, I, well, Porzingis does the injured part that he does. Yeah, otherwise. there you go. He does the rebounding and the injured part. Yeah. Uh, okay, I mean, is LeBron correct in calling Anthony Davis the face of the Lakers and a franchise great? LeBron is being a good teammate and a nice guy. <laughs> That's what that is. Right, like, I get what you're doing, LeBron. You got a pipe, a pipe. Wow, whoa! <laughs> you gotta pump up your 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 teammates. You gotta make them feel good. You gotta, you you, you have to. If this is hype me up, basically, is the game that LeBron yeah. is playing, and the Lakers are obviously way better equipped when Anthony Davis is confident and aggressive um, on both ends of the floor. Having said that, let's be real, man. Like, it's not Davis jerseys that are flying off the rack. It's LeBron jerseys. It's not Anthony Davis who gets a headshot when we say, oh, coming up next, Lakers versus Suns. It's LeBron. LeBron, and maybe part of that is the cult of personality that LeBron has built over uh, two decades plus of being excellent, right? And part of that is the Lakers kind of rise and fall as LeBron goes. Last year was the first time you could say that LeBron wasn't on the floor and the Lakers actually were competitive and, uh, and winning games and playing well without him. And Anthony Davis played really well in that stretch, but to be real, it's still, it's, this is still LeBron's world. All right. Charlotte, what will yes. be the biggest storyline this season? What a generic-ass question. Dame and... The Bucks. Did you ask me why also? No. Just what will be the... Okay. That's it. Name well, I think that there are a lot of big storylines, obviously, and we've talked about all of them from the offseason leading into this. You know, you've Harden, the, the Dame was huge, um, but now people are talking about Boston and Drew Holiday, and is that going to work? And um, then, of course, you have the Western Conference with I mean, a lot of drama in the East this offseason. But I think that the stakes are so high for Dame and the Bucks and and Dame and Giannis, you know, two superstars who haven't played with other superstars finally getting to do it. And is it going to work? And is Dame finally going to get that ring? So I don't see I, I think that's the biggest thing. And that, and I'm very invested in it. Do you agree? I think it's the Sixers, right? The Sixers have the opportunity to become this massive explosion of just stuff. Daryl Morey's job is on the line, I think, at this point. Joel Embiid might want out. James Harden does want out. If that chain reaction starts, then are people bidding on Tobias Harris? Are people bidding on uh, Maxi? Are people bidding on all the other little ancillary parts? De'Anthony Melton, for instance. Guys that can help good teams elsewhere that all comes together if Philly has a start that's so bad that makes him beat say, you know what, I've had enough. This is ridiculous. Yeah, I guess it is messiest. Anyway, are you ready for your next question? I am. <laughs> Between Lillard, Ayton, and Holiday, who will last the longest at their new team and why? Lillard, because under contract and best fit for his team. Okay. Right. So in the case of Holiday, he's got he's got one year left this year. He's got an opt out on the next year. Whether he opts in or out, like I, again, I just don't think that Drew Holiday is what he once was. And I think Boston is going to be left wanting more. By the way, shout out to all the dumbasses who are like, oh, who's gonna tell me that Holiday is 30 days younger than Dame? I'm not talking about it. Look, it's it's not a linear thing, dumbasses. If you guys watch sports, it's not like, well, once you reach this age, then we get this, and then this age. Like, some guys age more gracefully than others. Damian Lillard is aging a lot more gracefully than Drew Holiday. 
that's just a fact. Like, go ahead and 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 look at look at their production of the last few years. Watch the tape. Tell me which one is closer to playing like he was in his prime. And it's clearly Damian Lillard. Holiday, as I mentioned a million times, has flirted with retirement at the end of his contract. Right? Has talked about it. You know where he said it? This is where I messed up. And I got. I have an apology to make. I have an apology to make, Charlotte. Okay. He talked about retiring perhaps after this current deal is done. I never said where he said it. He said it on Point Forward, (laughs) which was a metal art property. And I'm the only one here. And he said, when he said it, it was a metal art property, right? Right? Yeah, there you go. They're not here anymore. But when they were here, that's where we got the the scoops. We got the scoops. All right. Okay. But but Dame fits perfectly with, uh, with... Giannis, I think that combination is going to be dynamite, and I think they're going to just win a shit ton of games and maybe a championship, and I think that's just going to continue on. Aiton, like, I mean, I guess he could stay in Portland. I, I, I can't wait for Portland to have its rude awakening. Um, Charlotte. Yes. What fan base should be most upset by their team's off-season moves or lack thereof? What fan base should be most upset by their team's off-season moves or lack thereof? Philadelphia? Because now it's a huge mess. Mm. Um, I think that there, I mean, there are a bunch of teams that could be angry, especially in the East, Um, like, you know, the Knicks and the Heat. But I think that in Philly, you are looking at a very combustible situation, as you said. And now what do you do with Harden? And Embiid, it's a, it's a disaster. I don't know. Do you think they should have done something in the offseason? Am I, am I, I, I don't know. It's just such a mess. I, I don't know if you're a Sixer fan. Are you like, why didn't we do anything? I don't know if that's the approach, although what Harden not, playing or not, right. you know, or sitting out, maybe that feels like, oh, we should have gotten something for him. But it's not like the Clippers were offering the sun, the moon, and the stars either. So I, I kind of see why they were relatively inactive. Shout out to Joel Embiid. This offseason has been fun, LMAO. Uh, I think kind of Miami, based on where I work and what I've seen, a lot of people seem to be upset. They feel like they were promised the best Christmas gift ever. And not only did they not get it, but they look across the street to that <laughs> kid who they hate, and it's like, that kid gets it? Like, that, there's an element of that going on in Miami, and I think there's a frustration level there. Um, and then, yeah, but the, the, the Sixers, have, they have all, all drama and no hype. I feel like you could have done something about that. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. Again, he wants to go to the Clippers, and Clippers right. were offering like Robert Covington and Norm Powell or something. It's just, it's not exactly something that people in Philadelphia or in South New Jersey are like, oh my God, I can't believe Maury didn't get me Robert Covington, right? And even as we hear Daryl's uh, comments on Media Day, he's saying we're either going to get an, a comparable star level player or we want enough draft picks to go out and get that kind of player. And yeah. I'm sitting there like, I don't know how realistic that is. But then again, Drew Holiday just got traded for two firsts and two rotation players. So who's to say in this crazy ass NBA? All right, I mean, moving on. How should Spurs fans feel about signing Devin Vassell to a five year, 146 million contract and why? Oh. $146 million. Got it. Not doll hairs. No, okay. not doll hairs. Dollars. They should feel good. It is a market value deal. They feel good. Okay, it's a market great. value deal, right? <laughs> so, Dem Vessel, who um, was one of their leading scorers last year, shot near 40% from three, uh, is an excellent defensive player. He's young. He's all about the Spurs way. I, I put him in that same class, maybe on the low end, but like in the same conversation as Tyler Hero, R.J. Barrett, Jordan Poole, um, that kind of guy, right? He's right there with them, and 
His production is along the same lines as theirs. And his non money is along the same line as theirs. The big difference in his deal and their deals is he's got five years, roughly a little less than $30 million a year. The rest of those guys got four years, roughly $30 million a year. And the reason why is because the rules in the old CBA would not allow you to give a five-year rookie extension without making it max. But now they change that rule. They allow teams to do that. So he is the recipient of this fifth year by virtue of a changing in the, in the type, right? In the, in the black and white of the document, not because he's so much better. The other thing, Charlotte, is remember, yeah. the new TV deal's coming in. Uh, in about a year or so. When that happens, we're going to get an influx. We already know the cap isn't going to spike crazy, but it's going to go up. So every year, that deal becomes more affordable, which was my point about Tyler Hero. It's like, regardless of how you feel about Tyler Hero making $30 million, in two years, that $30 million is not going to feel like $30 million feels right now. And by the way, the way it feels right now isn't that crazy either. So I think, yeah, Spurs fans should be kind of happy that he is there. Now, is he a savior? Is he a guy who's going to be a franchise face? No, but that's what you got Wembenyama for, right? That was a that was a lot of math to end Word Count Wednesday. Wow, wow, wow. Yep. All right. That's going to do it for <laughs> Word Count. Uh, next up, end of the show? I don't know. Is that the end of the show? Yeah. End of the show. We'll find out. We'll find out as you find out. You know what I really do love, though? What's that? The dance team's at NBA games like I'm upset like the I get really really excited when it's like you know you never know what the thing between the things is going to be if it's a t-shirt thing if it's like some mascot oh, okay are you talking but, about like the dancers or like the hype squad because those the are dancers. two different things well the dancers the dancers look let's be honest you watch winning time the dancers are the creation of Jerry Buss it's a way to Get some sex appeal to to the game. To but it's also I like just love watching dancing. I mean, I what? love watching people dance. Like Do good you? dancers. You know, it's funny yeah. to me. Like those, like that's not how anyone dances. Like yes, I get it. That's how choreographed dance works. But it's like you go to a party, you start dancing like that. People are gonna look at you weird. I'll never forget this. I've been to one Beyonce concert in my life, right? Just one. And, um. Like, uh, this was right when I was working for the Sun, so I was in a suite. The team had a suite. And then the next yeah. suite over, they had, I guess, the dancers. Like, it was a bunch of people, like, I could recognize, oh, those are the dancers over there. And as soon as she came on, they were all, like, bogan and doing high leg kicks and stuff. And I'm like, guys, she's not going to be like, you there, come down, be my background dancers. So they, they literally can't, like, just regular dance, like, oh, well, I'm having a good time or whatever. They're like, everything's like, pew, pow. Ooh, wah, da, 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 da. The next day. Got six, seven, eight, one, two, three. Kick and tick and turn and twirl and down and down and ride that pony. Like that's the only way they know how to dance. And I'm just like, wow. Like that sucks. That's such a like a, a an artificial. Because it's, it's not real. It's not real this life. This is your dumbest take. This is your dumbest take. It's not real. It's like the best kind. It's like the most sophisticated form of like cool dancing. No. If I could dance like that, I would dance like that all the time. But that's I can't. the problem. Like that, there, it, it has no place other than in a performance. If you're not performing, if you're at a party, at a club, you look ridiculous. It, it's no, like you you're not they, impressing dancers anyone. Dancers can dance casually. Not, I haven't seen these women do this. Like, not to my knowledge. There's, I it's think weird. you're wrong. It's so weird, man. And I'm like, like if I was at a club and I'm dancing, I'm like, hey, what's up? What's your name? Is oh, wow. Oh, oh, whoa, oh. All right. Okay. Never yeah, mind. that's probably they're probably doing it on purpose. They're like, I can tell this guy doesn't like good dancers. Watch me go. <laughs> Watch me go. No, you got. It. Uh -huh. You guys got it. It's what kind of person wants to do this? Like, you have to have this eternally... Are you, can you guys hear the drilling? Can you hear the drilling, Charlotte? Yeah. You yeah, can? Yeah, it's nice. Maybe you should yeah, wait a little bit. it's good ambiance. Now of I can Of course, can't. it stops now. Nope. I like the shy drill. You know? What is it? Like, either go do it or not do it. Do it or not do it. I just want to see a giant... Like I can't hear you anymore. Screwdriver come down from the. You can't oh, hear me? Dead battery. 
Turn it on and off. Dead battery. Whoa! <laughs>